My name is Noah Brown, and I'm a graduate of the St. Thomas Communication and Journalism Department. This is the story of the five rules of journalism I learned over the course of nearly a decade of training, and how each of those rules marked a different, crucial chapter in my development. This is how I got here. Step 1. Independence. Journalists must be independent voices. We should not act formally or informally on behalf of special interests, whether political, corporate, or cultural. It started back in the summer of 2010. In the weeks before 8th grade, my best friend Jake and I came up with the idea of hosting our own sports talk show. Jake volunteered at ETV, the public access television channel for the city of Egan, and we found out that if you took a couple of classes, you too could have your own show. So within three weeks we came up with the idea, he took the classes, and voila, Offside Sports was born. Good evening and welcome to the fifth edition of Offside Sports. I'm your host, Noah Brown. And today I have my guests Andre Gobert and Nick Brown. Guys, thanks for being here. The show ran from September 14th, 2010 to August 14th, 2015, which is far longer than any of us had expected. It wasn't much, but it was fun. And only partly because I got to say I had my own TV show. As Offside Sports progressed, however, it transformed from being just a way to hang out with friends and talk about sports to something more, something bigger. Suddenly I was hooked on this whole journalism thing. I wanted to do more, to learn more. And that led me to my high school's broadcast classes in The Flash, the once-weekly student-run news show. Through those couple of classes, I got my first taste of what it really meant to be a storyteller. The attack happened when most of us were beneath the age of five, and we don't remember it as much more than an attack that happened in a distant city a long time ago. However, this tragedy is connected to Eastview a lot more closely than a lot of people realize. While most people don't associate floor hockey with high-paced action, these players and their high-velocity style of play are looking to show just how fun the sport can be for both them and spectators alike. So even though it may seem that college is the only option available to us right now, if you look hard enough and you work hard enough to try and get to it, there are other options available. With EVTV's The Flash, this is Noah. For the first time in my life, I had something that was mine, that I was truly passionate about. I was finding my independence. Step 2. Impartiality. Most stories have at least two sides. Objectivity is not always possible, but impartial reporting builds trust and confidence. I knew fairly quickly after Offside Sports started that journalism was what I wanted to do. So as my high school graduation kept creeping closer and closer, I started to look at journalism schools. I thought my resume was pretty good. I had won a scholarship from the Upper Midwest Emmy Foundation, had a newspaper article written on Offside Sports in the Star Tribune, and was a featured ETV creator. One by one, though, I saw the list of schools I desperately wanted to go to fall off the list due to a number of varying reasons. Pretty soon, the University of St. Thomas was the only school left. <laughs> it was a backup school. But nevertheless, I was still happy to be going to a place with a journalism school that I felt I could jump into right away. Enter Professor Mike O'Donnell. MOD is an old, gruff news guy who's been around the block a couple of times. He was my first experience with the Kojo department here at St. Thomas. And the first assignment in his intro to Kojo class was a two-minute speech introducing ourselves. I felt fairly confident in my ability to present, but as soon as I walked into the front of that class, I froze. <laughs> I wish I had a video of that presentation just as a reminder of how far I've come. But needless to say, it was pretty terrible. And MOD wasn't afraid to tell me that after class. But he helped build me back up, giving me tools to help improve my delivery and composure. He showed me what I could be, but I still had a really long way to go. Even after what was then six years of some form of broadcast experience, I was still very much a novice. And I was a little too full of myself. I had to view my work impartially to get any better. Step three, accountability. A sure sign of professionalism and responsible journalism is the ability to hold ourselves accountable. We must be sincere, not cynical. I met both Greg Vandergrift and Peter Gregg during my first year at St. Thomas, but my mentor-advisee relationship with both of them began the following year. Vandy was my reporting professor, and Dr. Gregg was my academic advisor and later my videography professor. Both are experts in their craft and masters at communicating their lessons. I started multimedia reporting with Vanny in the fall of 2016. Even with the whole self-improvement thing I discovered with MOD, I still thought that I'd be able to slide right in and start producing great content that would impress both Professor Vandergrift and my classmates. <laughs> I couldn't have been more wrong. 
Every single package I shot for both the multimedia reporting and advanced reporting classes had at least one not so small issue. Some were underexposed. The lab won't just tie into education. This is the future right here. But will be education. In St. Paul, this is Noah Brown for Kojo 251. Others weren't white balanced correctly. The trail was built very narrow and used only two inches of asphalt as compared to today's industry standard of three. The result, potholes that fill with mud and become a tripping hazard and plants that in the summer overgrow and protrude onto the track. There is even one where the tripod broke midway through an interview. Every time I'd run into something like that, Vandy would just tell me, smart journalists find a way. The following year, I took both the intro and advanced video production courses with Dr. Greg. Following my experience with news, I figured production, where you have control over every single little detail, would help improve quality. And it did a little, but I would still run into issues with every single assignment that I did. Eventually, I sat down with Dr. Greg near the end of the intro to video class to tell him how frustrating it was to see myself plateau. He told me natural talent only gets people so far, and those with the desire to improve and who work at it every single day are the only ones who have a shot at making it. News and production are more than being good on camera. It's holding yourself to a higher standard and making a pledge to story above all else. Content is king. The stories aren't ours, and we're just lucky to be here telling them. We have a duty to work on our craft and become the best we can in order to do justice to the stories that we tell. I have to be accountable to myself and to the subject. Step four, humanity. Journalists should do no harm. We should be aware of the impact of our words and images on the lives of others. Throughout the course of Vandy's and Greg's classes, and every other Kojo course I took during that time, it was easy to get so caught up in the rules that I would sometimes forget exactly why this was all so important. Fortunately, that's where Tommy Media comes in. I had been at Tommy Media since the fall of 2016, but I moved into a leadership position nearly a year later. I had some of the most fun experiences of my life during those first two years with Tommy Media. Covering football at Target Field, hosting and producing nearly every single studio show that we had, and being a part of one of the best organizations that I can think of. Hey everybody, Noah Brown here for the TommyMedia.com pregame show ahead of tonight's St. Thomas Hamlin football game. We're here live at O'Shaughnessy Stadium. Going into this weekend's game, um, how have you all been preparing to make sure that even if it is a close game, it's still a game that you can win. We have teams at both the GOP headquarters in Bloomington and the DFL headquarters in downtown St. Paul. Plus, we've got a team of about 10 people here working to bring you the best coverage from tonight's election. Stay tuned to TommyMedia.com throughout the rest of the night for full coverage. My most important experiences, though, came when I served as director in the fall of 2018. We had a rough October and November. Two students passed away. A large protest over a racial slur being posted on a dorm room door was organized, and the midterm elections all happened within the span of about four weeks of each other. It was a trying time for our organization, and many of the teams spent God knows how many hours down in the newsroom. It was hard, and some days I questioned whether or not this was really what I wanted to do. Two days after the elections, once everything was starting to wind down, I was walking to the newsroom when an elderly lady pulled me aside. She recognized me from some promotional material Tommy Media had published and thanked me for the coverage that the organization had been doing. It's really important what you're doing, she said. In that moment, my love for journalism was reinvigorated. It's so easy to get caught up in the actual production of the content that we forget why we're doing this in the first place, for people. We tell these stories for those in them, for the audience, and for each other. We help each other grow and work through hard times. Stories have tremendous impact on those who are in the story, those who are told the story, and those who tell the story. We're all human. Step five, honesty. Journalists should be honest and courageous in gathering, reporting, and interpreting information. Ethical journalism means taking responsibility for one's work. At first, I felt my final semester in college was shaping up to be a little anticlimactic. After such an engaging, hectic, and wonderful semester in the fall, it felt like I didn't have much left to accomplish. But once again, I could not have been more wrong. My original post-graduation plans were to move to Chicago with my best friend TJ and work at a newspaper or other print news source. As the weeks progressed, though, I found what many of my advisors had been telling me to be true. And it's really hard to break into Chicago post-graduation in the news business. I had one interview with a magazine, and though it went well, it wasn't the kind of work I wanted to be doing. 
I found myself at a crossroads. As fortune would have it, right as I was entering into this dilemma of figuring out exactly what I wanted to do, I went to the NPPA News Video Workshop in Norman, Oklahoma. There, I was placed into a work group led by Brett Akagi, a longtime friend of Andy's. Now, I had met Brett a few times before, but this was the first time I really had long, meaningful interactions with him. He has a reputation for being tough, brutally honest, and absolutely hating excuses. It was inspiring to watch him instruct our class, break down each individual only to give them the tools and knowledge necessary to build themselves back up again to greater heights. I pulled him aside during the last night of the conference and told him the struggles that I had been having with my career search, and that I was worried that it was too late for me to jump back to video and try to get back to the medium that started me on this road so many years ago. He told me it would suck, that I would have to work harder than I ever had in my life to get to where I wanted to be, but that it was possible. And two weeks after that conversation, I was hired by KRCG-TV in Jefferson City, Missouri, and will start work as a multimedia journalist just two weeks after graduation. So here I am, finally being honest with myself, excited and nervous to see exactly what this whole journalism thing is about. This is my story so far, but it's only just the beginning.